Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper. Just a reminder, this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to discuss your concerns. You can find my books on Amazon, my videos are on YouTube, or you can listen to my podcast, Life Without Baggage, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. Now here is an excerpt from a recent podcast. That your tendency to shrink back is not the dignity that God wants you to have. He wants you to walk with your head up and your shoulders back and to move forward with confidence that he goes with you and that he has a good plan for you. So that leads us right into the third gift, that there is a destiny for you. It says in Psalm 139 that God knew his plans for you while you were still forming in your mother's womb and that he watches over you tenderly and that you're always in his thoughts. People need a purpose at every age. They need um, some kind of focus, some something that gives them drive and purpose and a reason to get up. So you have a unique destiny in Jesus Christ. And I kind of was thinking about it like the beginning of Mission Impossible, where it says your mission should you decide to accept it, that God has a unique mission for you. And you can choose not to accept it. But the deepest satisfaction and purpose and meaning is going to come as you as you yield your gifts and your abilities and your time and affection to him. So here's some more thoughts about destiny. Sometimes The name that you've been given is a picture of your destiny. When I work with clients, a lot of times we look up what their name means because it may be a clue of how God has designed them to be a blessing or how God sees them as a blessing. Now, not every name fits this. Um, For me, I actually think my middle name fits more of the direction and calling and purpose that God has given me. And I think my first name has more to do with how God sees me. So um, I'm not going to get into that. But you can look yours up yourself. And um, if you're named after a movie star, there's still probably something farther back in history, a a meaning to your name, maybe in Latin or Greek, that gives you an idea of maybe what your destiny is. The other thing is sometimes people have a dream. They just always wanted to do this or they always wanted to do that. And it may be their profession or it may be a passion they have that is a big part of why you're on earth for your own enjoyment and also for the enjoyment of others. For example, some people do a job that isn't their passion. I mean, my job is my passion. But some people don't have that. They don't have that privilege. And so their hobby is their passion. I know a lot of people that love cooking and feeding other people. And so they use that passion in a side business or in volunteering at a mission or at some at a community soup kitchen or things like that. So their passion gives them joy and they're doing positive things for other people. The way that you're gifted will give you joy and satisfaction. It will be a blessing to other people. And most likely, it's also a legacy to help build the kingdom of God, not just while you're alive, but for future generations. I'm going to read a passage to you from my book, Sheep Hear His Voice, that I think sort of fits with this concept of destiny. This is um, from page 64. It's a devotional book. It was my first published book. At various transitions in life, people try to figure out who they are and where they fit in. Most people figure it out over time, but sometimes there's so much change or loss that we have to figure it out all over again. Too much change can make us feel like we have no place and no purpose. But that isn't how it is in the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that we are uniquely designed and crafted to fit into a physical body of believers. There's a group where our gifts and personality will be validated and accepted. We need that place, too, to help us grow in our understanding of God and in His Word. We need a sense of belonging, connection, and protection. It keeps us strong and hopeful. 
The Bible is full of mysteries. It tells us that we're part of a spiritual cathedral of praise to God when we are in Jesus. That Jesus is the cornerstone of this spiritual building. And he's the only foundation for the true, secure connection to God. His life flowing in us gives us true perspective on our belonging and our worth. God makes each of us like beautiful living stones that are perfectly joined to one another and to Jesus Christ. You belong to Jesus who adores you as his friend, his bride, and his jewel. You belong somewhere with other believers who love God and you. You are supernaturally part of the kingdom of God that's like a shiny castle of people all through the ages who have joined their hearts and spirits together in joy to worship God. So we all have gifts and talents, spiritual gifts and natural talents. You have at least one spiritual gift. I'm just going to read from Romans 12, 6 through 8 from the Passion Translation. And there are tests you can take online if you don't know what your spiritual gift gifts are. Or you can ask a friend, but just let me read this to you. God's marvelous grace imparts to each one of us varying gifts and ministries that are uniquely ours. So if God has given you the gift of prophecy, you must activate your gift by using the proportion of faith you have to prophesy. If your grace gift is serving, then thrive in serving others well. If you have the grace gift of teaching, then be actively teaching and training others. If you have the gift of encouragement, then use it often to encourage others. If you have the gift of giving to meet the needs of others, then may you prosper in your generosity without any fanfare. If you have the gift of leadership, be passionate about your leadership. And if you have the gift of showing compassion, then flourish in your cheerful display of compassion. That was Romans 12, 6 through 8 from the Passion Translation. So different churches have different opinions about the gifts I'm not going to try to wade through that, but everyone has at least one spiritual gift. And along with that, you might be familiar with the concept of seven mountains of influence, that not everybody is called to be a missionary or a pastor, but there are seven mountains in society, cultural dimensions, where we can have an influence. And if you're interested in that, uh, people like Lance Wallnow, or Johnny N. Lowe, talk a lot about this. So I'm just going to tell you what those seven spheres of societal influence are. Religion, the church, family, education, government, media, arts and entertainment, or business. So God may position you in one or several of those um, spheres of influence. And at different times in your life, how God wants to use you, the doors that are open to you may shift. And so we want to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. And I always go back to the idea that the more that we learn to live in the presence of God, to abide in Him, He gives us wisdom, He gives us strategies, and we just kind of go with the flow of what He wants to do. And I'm going to close with my blessing from Isaiah 11:2. May the Spirit of the Lord rest upon you, His Spirit of extraordinary wisdom, His Spirit of perfect understanding, His Spirit of wise strategy, of mighty power, of revelation, and the reverential awe of the Lord. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this was Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening, and if you enjoyed this, share it with a friend.